Hey guys, today we're checking out a brand new platform called Photo Vibrance. It's a very cool photo editing software that makes your photos look like they're moving. And normally I don't look at a lot of photo editing apps here on my channel, but this one is brought to you by the same people who make Create Studio. And you know how impressed I've been with Create Studio lately, so I definitely had to check it out. I am going to see today if I can recreate the very cool looks that Photo Vibrance has in its promotional materials. We're gonna see how easy it is to use and if I can replicate these really great effects. This video is not sponsored. These opinions are my own. I do have a link to Photo Vibrance below if you wanna check it out for yourself. And now let's get right into it. So here we are in the Photo Vibrance platform. The first step is to add your photo. And you've got two options here. Let's first start with Magic Motion. This is kind of the more basic effect in Photo Vibrance. And then we're gonna move on to the 3D Parallax, which is very, very cool. So here is our photo. And the first thing we need to do is choose the, they call it resolution, I call it aspect ratio. So here is the landscape look of this photo. The next is square. And lastly, we can do vertical. Let's pick square for this one and hit the next button in the bottom right of the screen. And now we are ready to start editing. So one of the things you can do with Photo Vibrance is that you can make uh, different textures in your photo look like they're sort of rippling. Um, but first what you need to do is decide what you don't want to add that effect to. So what we're going to do is add what are called anchor points. So I'm gonna mouse on over top center of my screen, hover over anchors and let's select single anchors. And now what we can do is click along our image that we don't want to have that rippling effect. In this case, it's this man in a kayak who happens to be my husband. And we're just gonna click away and outline him. Guys, while I'm clicking away here, let me just remind you to give this video a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and ring the bell if you're new to my channel and you wanna see more content and product reviews like this one. Okay, so I've added in all my anchor points. The next thing I wanna do is add that really cool motion to the water in this shot. So to do that, we're gonna head on back up to the top of our screen and we're going to select arrows and single. And now what I wanna do is decide which way I want the water to sort of move. And if you can see here, the water is going in a few different directions. So like back over here, it's coming toward the camera. And then over here at the front of his kayak, it's. Uh, coming to the camera, but toward the left. So what I'm gonna do is look at the water and I'm gonna set all of these arrow points to kind of tell the water which direction it should be going at any given time. Now to do this, I just click with my mouse and drag and create these little short arrows. And this is gonna take me quite some time, so I'm just gonna speed this part up for you guys. Okay, I've added in all my arrows. Now we get to see if this worked. We're gonna draw our attention up to the top center of the screen again and hit the play button. Whoa, oh my goodness. And we can adjust the speed of the motion by using this slider here. I think I like it about here. My favorite part of this entire scene has got to be this splash here at the front of the kayak. That looks awesome. So now we could leave our image there and it looks pretty amazing, but we can add even a little more sizzle to this photo. We can actually replace the static sky from the photo with one that's moving and I love that idea. So let me show you how to do that. We're gonna go on over to effects. We're gonna hit skies. I'm just like this one here. 
and I'm just gonna click it to drop it into my frame. And I'm just gonna reposition it here. And obviously it is not in the right spot, right? Because we need to cut out around our horizon line and our subject. So what we're going to do is use the draw mask feature. So over here on the right side of your screen, hit draw mask and you get this pencil tool. Do you see this red dot? What we're gonna do is paint out our existing sky. So just hold down your mouse and drag it around the frame. And you just wanna make everything red. That's how you know what you've painted out already. I'm gonna make the pencil size humongous here just for speed. And then I can shrink it down for more detail work later down the road. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my pencil size and dial it down so I can really fine tune. And this doesn't have to be perfect, 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 but you wanna get as close to perfect as you can. And then if you make any mistakes, you can use the erase mask feature to just undo. Okay, we're very close and to just fine tune, let's dial up the edge fading. Very, very, very cool. Let's put some finishing touches on this. So this is just a personal photo, but if we wanted to make it look like an ad, let's head on over to shapes, rounded rectangle. We can change the color of this using this color board. We can make it any color we want. I'm gonna make it the same color as his kayak. Now let's add some text. Just grab the text tool over here. You get this text box. I mean, if that wouldn't grab someone's attention as an ad on Instagram or Facebook, I don't know what would. Let me show you how to publish this. We're gonna first save it. I'm gonna call it Kayak Tours. So let's hit the publish button. And we can choose between an MP4, so a video file, or you can make it a GIF. Some people say GIF. Somebody in the know told me it's pronounced GIF, so that is what I'm trying to remember to say. And you can change how many frames per second in the GIF um, and the image width. I'm gonna make it an MP4 and you can decide how many loops you want it to have. Uh, that'll determine the length of the video. Let's give it two loops and I'm going to hit publish and we're gonna rename it again, Kayak Tours. And we're gonna hit that save button. And there it is, that looks so great. All right, I'm really excited about this first project, but the next one is even cooler, I promise. I'm gonna exit out of this, and let's hit browse to grab our next image. And I'm gonna select this shot I took in Thailand on vacation, and this time we're gonna do the 3D parallax, which is amazing, it makes it look really 3D. Let's select that. And first, of course, we need to select our aspect ratio. I'm gonna stick with landscape and hit this next button, bottom right. And then the first thing we need to do is cut out part of this frame because what the parallax effect is gonna do is it's going to almost feel like a pop-up book, like certain uh, images in our picture are in front of others. And we're gonna add a camera effect and it's gonna feel very three-dimensional. It's gonna be amazing. So the first thing we need to do is decide what to cut out. So for me, I believe I'm gonna cut out this like front part of this mountainside here. So let's select cut new object and then I just start clicking away. Okay, I 
feel pretty good about the cutout job I've done here. So now I'm going to hit the next button in the top right and it disappears. Now it gets a little more complicated. We need to fill in the hole that we've created with texture from what's left because when we do the parallax effect with the camera, if you've got my front mountain here and then here's my background and the camera kind of goes up over my, my front mountain, you're gonna see this black hole. So we need to fill that in. So let me show you how to do that. We want to hit this start cloning button. I'm gonna bump up the radius of my cursor here and we wanna grab parts of this picture that we can use to fill in this hole. So I'm going to hover my cursor over like, let's say this part of the mountain. I'm gonna push down my control button on my keyboard. So now my little cursor turns into this red dot. I'm gonna click with my mouse and now I can fill in this hole. This is very similar to the cloning tool in Photoshop. It's pretty much exactly the same. So if you know how to use that, all right, actually that looks pretty good, doesn't it? It looks pretty realistic. So now we're gonna hit the next button. You can see that my formation that I cut out has magically come back. And the next thing we wanna do is now add our motion to our parallax effect. So I'm gonna hit this camera button, bottom toward the center of the screen, and I'm going to set the start point of my frame. So using this icon here that's appeared in the center of our screen, I'm going to set it up here, let's say. So this is going to be our start point. And if I wanted to, I could zoom in a hair by hitting this magnifying glass. I can also change the rotation, which I'm not going to do yet. And I can also change the scale and rotation over here on the top right of the screen. But I can't change the camera position. I have to do that using this blue icon in the center. All right, so. I've set my start point. The next thing I want to do is add what's called a keyframe, which basically tells Photo Vibrance where I want the camera effect to zoom into or how I want it to move. So I'm gonna hit this add keyframe button and it defaults my keyframe to two seconds later. I'm gonna leave it there for now. I might adjust that later, but I can tell I'm working on this keyframe because it's highlighted blue, whereas my original one is sort of grayed out. And now what I want to do is zoom way in on my image and up. I wanna feel like we're going up over this mountain. And I can adjust how dynamic the camera movement is over here in animation easing. So I can go linear. This little fish icon tells me what it's gonna look like. Sign, which sort of eases in and out. I'm gonna go power four. And let's play and see what we've got so far. That's very cool. But now I actually want the camera motion to keep going and do something a little different. So I'm going to select add keyframe again. And again, it defaults the keyframe two seconds after, but this time I'm gonna drag it all the way to the end of my 10 second clip. And now let's do a little more. So this action is going to be much more gradual because it's gonna happen over eight seconds in terms of duration, as opposed to over two seconds, like we had the first two keyframes set up. So I'm going to scale in, and I'm going to go way up with this. I really want it to feel like we're going above our formation here. And I'm gonna add a little rotation. All right, let's play that. Now what I'd really like to do is add a little more definition between my front rock formation and the mountains behind it. So I'm gonna hit the effects icon on the left of the screen and then hit the effects tab at the top there. And I'm going to grab this smoke and I'm just gonna click it to drop it into my frame. And then I can reposition it by just grabbing it here. And now what it's defaulted to doing is having the smoke in front of my front cutout rock formation. I actually wanna add it behind. So how do I do that? I need to reorder the layers. So at the bottom center of the screen here, you see this layers bar. I can actually grab these little dots that represent the elements here in my canvas. So here you see the smoke clearly in front of my mountain, right? You can see this hard edge. 
I'm gonna drag this object over here and now it's behind the mountain. So let me play that again and show you. Okay, that's very cool, but I do notice I've got this hard line of the smoke over here on my screen. I actually don't want that. So what I can do is grab the edges of the frame and sort of just like compress it so that it's entirely behind my rock formation. Okay, so one other thing I want to do is add an object into this frame. So I'm going to head on over to objects here on the left side of my screen. And I'm gonna add in this little monkey because in these mountains, there were definitely many monkeys. I don't think this is the right species, but that's okay. I'm gonna shrink him way down. So he's really tiny. And I'm going to place him like right up here in my rock formation. And then I'm gonna draw my attention to my layers bar and I'm gonna reorder this. I want him to be just behind my mountain, but still behind it so it looks like he's in the bushes. That looks so, so, so cool. So what do I think about Photo Vibrance? Here are my honest thoughts. What I love about Photo Vibrance, obviously, is the end result of these projects. They are stunners. They are scroll stoppers. I mean, this is really an amazing platform. If you wanted to create this parallax effect before, you would have to use two different programs. So like, let's say Photoshop to cut out your mountain and to clone in the part where you cut out. And then you would have to bring that into some sort of editor like Final Cut or iMovie or Premiere to make that camera effect happen where you had things at different depths. That is something that you can do all in one platform with Photo Vibrance and I love that. I think to get the best results from Photo Vibrance is you really have to start with a photo where these kinds of effects make sense. So something where there's a lot of sky you can cut out or water you can make move. In their demos, they have really cool effects with eyes and with like animal fur. So you really definitely need to start with an image where you can do a lot with Photo Vibrance. And then it's a little bit time consuming, right? You saw me have to like draw in all those arrows and cut out the sky and cut out the mountain. Like you have to dedicate some time to this. This is not the kind of thing where you just like apply a filter and you're done. But the end results are pretty spectacular. One thing I do think Photo Vibrance is missing is the ability to edit or color correct your photos in this platform. There is not like a color correction feature at this time uh, for your photos. So I do think they could add that. But if you learned anything from watching my Create Studio reviews, you know that they're adding new stuff all the time to their programs. So I anticipate that more features will be added to this as well. This to me is a huge thumbs up, you guys. I have a link to this below if you wanna check out Photo Vibrance. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you thought this was a fun video and I will see you again.